We are live. Coming to you live on this Friday. Let's see if I can get this uh, visual fixed up here. But in this video, I'm going to go over four items that every vendor needs. So if you're just getting started in vending business and you're not sure what you need, this isn't everything you need, but this will give you a good start. So, and let's see if we can get this, uh, this lighting right. You know, the, the lighting down here in Tampa is so great. You just gonna have so much, you have such an abundance of, of sh sunshine, if I can say it right, that you have to hide you have to hide from the sun down here. So there we go, that's a little bit better. So I'm gonna go over the four items that you need to have, okay? So let's get right into it. Number one item, number one item, if you're watching the replay, let me know. Let me know what you think about this list. So number one, this. In order to remove this, this is a great tool to have. In order to remove your bill validator, your credit card reader. This is a nut driver, 1130 seconds. See if you can see that number right there. You can get this at any home improvement store. What it does, I thought I had some right here, is these right here are what hold this bill validator in place. There's four of them, okay? But see how you can't reach that? See how this is in the machine? You need this extension to reach it. So that's the first one. That's the first one. What's up, everybody? Adam Hill Vending, 120 vending machines down here in Tampa, Champa Bay, Florida. Um, trying to help you guys get started in the vending business, share what we're doing here at Hill Vending, how we're coming back from the, uh, the Rona, but today's video, you're gonna need these four items. So that's number one, and I'll go into more depth in these in a minute, but let's get through them, and then you can let me know what you think. Number two, you need one of these. You need one of these. I'll go into that in more depth. Number three, everyone wants to get accounts. Do I pay a locator? Do I go and talk to people? You need one of these. You need a brochure. I'll go into why a brochure, is better than a credit card reader or a, a, a um, business card, not a card reader. I'll go into why that's better. Um, and then you need one of these $20 on Amazon, something really cheap, a label maker. So we've got this, a label maker, a tape measure, and a brochure for marketing. If you get a question while you're watching the stream or on the replay, drop it down below and I'll try to get to it, uh, if not now, on the next stream. So, let's go into this a little bit more here. Let's go into this a little bit more as I'm standing behind a pallet of Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper cans. Okay. Nut driver. Like I said, you can find these on Amazon. This is a Klein Tools brand but you're gonna want one of these in your toolkit. Besides your normal screwdriver, your different tools, we can go into another video. But this, like I said, because of the distance, because of how far it can reach, and the size. So you need that exact size, 1130 seconds. It's gonna help uh, with your credit card readers, removing and installing your credit card readers, removing and installing your bill validators. So number, uh, Next, what do we have? Tape measure. Now, why do we need a tape measure? Why does a vending machine person, male or female, which by the way, females are probably better at vending than males. They're more on it, they're on it. More particular, more precise, keep their machines cleaner, everything's good. So if you're a female trying to get into vending, the only uh, drawback is the physical capacity, the weight. But if you have a, uh, an account that's not doing super, super high volume, you know, you can pick up a case of soda. But yes, 
I have met plenty of even older women who have a couple accounts, retired, and want to do vending. But let's get back to a tape measure. Tape measure, mainly in your marketing kit, because the last thing you want to do is get started in vending. Tell them you could put a machine in, buy the machine, and realize that it's not going to fit through the doorway or it's not going to fit in the space that was provided. So let's say you have a, a, a small doorway and your machine, even with the door open, it cannot swing in. That's why you need the tape measure to confirm the space that you're going to be putting the machine and to confirm the size requirements. For example, going to be installing two machines next week at a location that has a little alcove next to the um, sitting area next to the sitting area and it's only a six foot opening so there's going to be a 721 that goes in a four wide five wide snack machine will not fit only a three wide snack machine will fit under the under those measurements and there's walls on each side so you only have six feet to work with so if i would have gone in there and said yeah we're gonna get these machines in there didn't bring one of these oh that looks big enough put in a four wide you're gonna spend all this time and the benefit i have is i can move all my machines with my 2004 f-250 with a lift gate if you have to pay someone to move your machines you're gonna have to move the machines twice like the carpenters say measure twice cut once if you're a carpenter go ahead and smash the like button as i said in the last last live stream i'm not a tinkerer I hope that's a word, tinkerer. You want to use one of these. So while you're at the Home Depot, while you're at Lowe's, grab you both of these. Okay? There's a lot more items that you need, but I'm covering four today. A tape measure. So, again, common sense. Also, the doorway. When they tell you where they want the machines, that's one aspect of it. That's great. That's where they're going to go. Let's say it's wide open. You can put anything... Uh, you have unlimited space, not like the six foot, you have unlimited space. That's great. The next problem you're going to have is where are they coming in? Because just because they can fit against that wall, if the doorway where they're coming in, they can't fit through. You're not David Blaine. You can't make a mat. You can't do magic tricks. Okay. Brief pause. Our, our sponsor this half hour is dishes and fishes on YouTube. If you like to cook and set hooks, go ahead and give them a sub. They're almost near a thousand. So the doorway, for example, if it's a double door, if it's a roll up door, you're going to have no problem. You can move right in. They can machines can go right in. If the machines, if the doorway is narrow, which you might have to do, which this is an expert level. I have a PhD in vending self, uh, self given. I don't know what the word is self awarded. I have a PhD in vending, in the vending business, not in fixing machines. Again, I'm not a tinkerer. If you're looking for someone to refurb and fix machines, I want to make money with machines. I don't want to fix machines. If, you, if you're looking for somebody to teach you how to fix machines, keep on looking. There's plenty of those guys out there. Okay. So where was I? Got me all fired up here on Friday. Friday fire up. Drop in the comments where you're watching from, please. Let me know. I want to know. We got Germany. Costa Rica's been watching. California, Texas. Let me know down below, please. So the doorway. Now this, where we're going to install these machines next week, has a double door. Has a double door. But it has that center beam. You know, so it's got two doors, but it's got that metal beam in the middle. So... We're going to have to talk to coordinate with the maintenance department. This is something that, see, this is something that you have to think through that, that I only learned this by showing up, having the wrong size machine, showing up, not being able to remove that beam, not knowing that you're not going to be able to fit through there. And once you do this a few times, it'll be second nature, um, second nature to you. However, we're going to have to remove, we're going to have to have the maintenance or whoever, the property manager people, to use the little key and remove that beam 
so we can wheel them right in. And I use a pallet jack and piano dollies is, is how I move all my machines, okay? Um, so let me see here, I see some, some stuff coming in. Let me get to the live chat. Thank you guys for watching. We have Latvia in the house. Nice, international. And Colorado, thanks Mike for dropping that down below. Thanks guys. Golden Key Vending says, do you use 12 ounce can shims for your 16.9 ounce bottles? <laughs> That's the beauty. Good question. That is the beauty of the Vendo 720. Kevin's in the building. Kevin. Kevin, number one on YouTube. Follow Kevin. Subscribe to Kevin from San Diego. Great guy, Kevin. So, the beauty of a Vendo 721, I should be sponsored by Vendo 721. I, or Vendo. Vendo should sponsor me. Vendo, if you're watching, listen, let's talk. Email me. Call me. Slide in my DMs. Come on, Vendo. Uh, Vendo 721 is a drink machine. Uh, I do not have one accessible right now. It's behind some machines. But the, the beauty of a Vendo 721, what's the beauty of it? You don't need any shims. No shims, unless you want to do Red Bull. I don't advise doing the little Red Bull can stick with a 16 ounce. You do not need any can shims with a Vendo 721. You set the depth. It has a drop sensor. You don't need any of that, which is why Kevin knows. And if you've watched any of my other content, you know Dixie Narco, Dixie Narco and Royal, which a couple weeks ago I got fired up and put Royal above Dixie Narco. Royal machines that are front and back loader, meaning you have like four selections up front, four behind, and you load it up. And if this column doesn't sell, you have to unload it, reach back and over and put it in. It's the worst design vending machine I've ever seen in my life. Second is Dixie Narco 501E. And the reason is they don't, they don't, uh, that's why they don't make them anymore. Everyone loves it. I, some people say, uh, I love 501Es. That's great. You know how to work on them. You have all the parts and all the pieces. Vendo 721 is by far the best vending machine you can buy. I would, I would go, I would tell any, I would have anyone want to debate that with me. Let me know. Vendo 721 is by far the 21 series. So it's Vendo. It could be a 721. That's just the size. 721. You can get an 821. You can get a 621 different capacities, large, medium, small. But you got me fired up on Vindo 721. Let me get back to the list here. Appreciate the question though. Um, so where were we? We got done with the tape measure. Again, we're going to have to remove that beam, slide them in. These are things that you don't think of that they're going to, yeah, that's the worst feeling when you show up and you cannot fit your machine through the door. And if you're not an expert in, in, in knowing how to, to swing the door, um, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem for you. So I'm trying to help you avoid that problem because it's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you time. So that's number two. Number three, where are we? That's one, two. Here we are. Um, I forget which order this is in. Which was it, label maker or brochure? Brochure, let's go with brochure, okay? This is a hill vending brochure. You can get these made on the internet. The reason I like this, a trifold with some pictures, front, oh snap, front, back, all right? A little map, little palm trees, something simple with your name, contact information. If you get a business card, what is it? It's this small, people throw them away, they don't care. The bigger the material, the better. The bigger it is, the less likely they're going to throw it away. So that's, a, that's the first reason. The next reason is you, you want to have something that you can leave. When we're getting into finding locations now, you want to have something that you can hand them, something tangible, because even if they put you off, oh, we're good. Even if they're not good, a lot of times they're, they're just, they don't even know. So don't get turned off by that. A lot of accounts, if they say, oh, we're good, they don't even know they don't know that they're not good, okay? So don't, don't, uh, the, the money in vending is in the follow-up, okay? The money in vending 
If you're watching right now on the, on the replay, if you watch this far, go ahead and drop in there, follow up. The money is in the follow up. Look at this list of account. You can't really see it with the sun. These are lists. That's a list of targets that we follow up with. That we're gonna contact and we're gonna follow up with them. Okay, you have to have a system, a system, build your system. Again, all this, 497 in the course. If you're interested, email me, adam at hillvending.com. But for this live stream, let me get back to these golden key vending. I have a 6V Vendo 511, 540 in Michigan. Yeah, if you're not a 21, you're gonna have to deal. That's the problem with Vendo that's not a 21 series. You're gonna have to deal with the gauge bars and the clips and the uh, shims. So that's why I don't recommend those models. You'll, the good thing about Vendo though, you can call their tech support, just Google Vendo. Free technical support, okay? So you can call them up, tell them your serial number, tell them your problem, and they will solve that problem for you. Or they'll point you in the right direction. They'll give you a part number, they'll tell you where to order. That's a nice thing about it, okay? Other manufacturers, you have to pay for technical support. You have to pay. You have to pay for that. It's like, what in the world? Bought your machine, now I gotta pay you? Crazy. So, um, I would, Golden Key, give, uh, give Vendo a call, Google their number, give them a call, ask for technical support, tell them what you have, tell them what you wanna do, and they can solve that problem for you. Let's see what questions we have here. Uh, Mike. Thorn, I recently took all the wiring and control from a 501 and transplanted it into my old single price making a credit card. See, Mike, that's good, Mike. Mike is, he's mechanically brained, okay? Mike's a tinker. He can tinker. He can, Mike knows how to do all that. The problem for the average vendor, you just want to put machines out and make money. If you don't have that knowledge, you're going to get into a world of problems or you're going to have to pay someone like Mike have to pay someone like Mike to do that to your machines. And once you start getting and upgrading older machines, can you get parts for those machines? What if something breaks on that board? Can you get that board? When you're going into, into quality locations, you want to have newer machines. That's why I recommend AMS Snack Vendo 721. Adam, they're so they're expensive. What do you mean? They're expensive. Read that. If you buy a used Vendo 7, you have to look for deals. The key is, you guys, if you're watching my content, you're ahead of the game because you can go on Facebook Marketplace, you can go on Craigslist, you can go on OfferUp, and you can look for Vendo 721s. And you see everyone's looking at Dixie Narco Single Price, Dixie 501. And then when that comes available, you can go in on it. You can find an AMS. I just bought a month, three weeks ago, an AMS... I wish I would have pulled it out. A $4,000 machine that they're selling at a store. If I were to go buy it, it's a used AMS for $4,000. Used. I bought a two-year-old AMS 39 5-wide machine with refrigeration, six trays for $2,500. That's what I'm trying to get across. If you stay with the same brands, it's easier to find deals. If you're looking at Royal, if you're looking at Dixie Narco, if you're looking at Vendo, if you're looking at all these different brands, imagine it's like you're looking at Toyota, Honda, uh, Ford, Chevy, right? You're looking at too much. Pick a car, a Ford, or pick a brand, Ford, Vendo, Ford, whatever. Then pick the model, the Ford Expedition. You know what it is? Vendo is the Ford F-150. Vendo 721 is the Ford F-150 of vending machines. I said it. It's the King Ranch edition. You might even say it has a platinum trim. Platinum trim. It's got the platinum trim with the off-road, off-road. It's rugged. It can do everything. Okay? Do you have to pay for that? Yeah, three, 4000 But guess what? If you want to get out of vending, you can sell those. The resale value is there. When you buy the best-selling tr truck in America, the Ford F-150, and you go to sell that, okay, you're going to get your resale value there. When you buy a machine, a Dixie Narco 501E for uh, $1,000, 
you'll be lucky to get a thousand dollars back you'll be lucky to get half of that back because they're everywhere and you have to find the right buyer so let me see here where we were where was i, I went on a little tangent there guys i got a little bit um kevin surprisingly in san diego there are not a lot of 721 721s around do you mean that you see around or for sale it's almost impossible to get a used ams vending machine not impossible refurbished you can get since it three ams people hold on to them people do not sell them or if they do they get good money for it um do you own golden key vending do you own any glass front machines yes the bevmax we have a bevmax we have a vendo gf9 i like to stay away from glass fronts as much as possible just due to the mechanical uh, failure that is inevitable with all glass fronts do they look better does it look nice when you can put 45 different selections sure but you know what's not nice when that arizona t falls and breaks down the whole machine and some of you guys are driving an hour or two hours away to fill your machines if you're driving two hours and they tell you oh yeah this machine's broke what happens with a vendo with a with a regular machine not even vendo regular if one column gets jammed, the rest of the machine will work. If there's 10 selections and one selection gets jammed, the other nine will work. The problem with the glass front is if one bottle falls and messes up the arm, the cup, the dispensing mechanism, the whole machine is down. That's the problem with glass fronts. Okay? So that's why you try to stay away from it, except at super, super duper good. I said it first time here on YouTube, super duper, okay? Super duper good accounts be, that are worth the headache. And where we have them, we have a 721 backup. We have actually a, a other machine backup. So if that one fails, which that glass front is going to fail, Vendo, Vendo uh, I'll go ahead and say Vendo cannot make a glass front, okay? They need to stick to the 721. You know this is not a Vendo... Uh, a 22 series they just keep pumping out 21 720 they keep pumping out the 21 series 621 721 821 there's not an improvement on it they upgrade that they change the front they'll change the display it's like the f-150 the ford f-150 ford does not come out with a different ford uh velociraptor okay they keep making what works so that's why i recommend it and i have a bunch of machines that are Vendo 721, and I've used them for years, and they are awesome. So, if you've got to pay a little bit more to not tinker with the machine, that's what I recommend doing. Okay, let me see what else we have here. Thanks everybody for hopping on here. Going over four, um, going over four things that you need. Again, to recap, you need this. You need this. This is 1130. This is just a guarantee. Tape measure. We went over that. The brochure. Bigger. The bigger. Okay. They're not going to throw it away. It can go on their desk. You can hand it to them. You need something to hand to a potential account. Okay. You need something. And then finally, this. You can get these on Amazon. It's a, it's a um, label maker here. Okay. Let's see. The turn on here. Runs by batteries. Okay, you can put your phone number. If you want to put your phone number on the machine or whoever you want to be the contact person. You can change prices. You can make price labels. There's a lot. The versatility with this, a game changer. Because before, with all the different model machines, you had to get the little price label and you had to get the little thing. You had to order them in. AMS stopped even making. They just say a check press selection for price. They don't even want you to label it. They want you to press the selection on the keypad to see the price. So you don't technically have to do that. Um, so you're, Kevin, so you're saying the F-250 is the best vending truck. Uh, well, I have an F-250 to move machines. You could use a box truck. You could use a trailer. That's just my setup. Um, yeah, you see them around, but they're not for sale. The reason they're not for sale is because people hold on to them because they work. Mike, yes, those five, five, nine, one, those are headaches. Yeah, the Dixie Narco, right. 
But once you know how to work on them, then, you know, if people stick with that, then they'll be great. David in the building. What's up, David? Not a big fan of my Vendo glass front either. Um, I'm assuming you have the, do you have a view or do you have the GF9? So I'll tell you real quick. I'll tell you a little story. Tell you a little story. Had an account, needed a glass front, needed a glass front. Okay. Went and bought a, well, I've had a view before. Yeah, a Vendo view. Vendo view, view about six years ago, and th that was nothing but, it has a little arm, it has a little, nothing but problem. Reaches out and grabs it, nothing but problems. Okay, I bought a GF9, I think it was six or $7,000. Say $7,000. But this was an account, nice account, boom, boom, boom. Brand new, brand new, not used. The first week, so it has a delivery chute where the they go get the drink and then it falls and then it opens up and they grab the drink and then it closes, right? The way it knows how to open and close the door, right, where you grab the drink, the way it knows how to open is there's two little, there's some sensors on each side of this cup so that when there's something in there, it opens. When you remove it, it closes, right? Whoever designed this, do not buy. I would not recommend a, a Vendo GF9. Whoever designed this, they had sensors on each side that had to line up that were looking at each other. This hole was so small, when a drink would fall in there, it would knock the sensor off or something. Anyway, the first week in there with a drill, in a drill bit, drilling out, boring out the holes so that it was a bigger space. Think about that. Think about that. A $7,000 machine in there drilling out drilling it out but we still have it knock on wood it ever since then it's been working good it does have issues like i say where drinks fall on the track and they will jam up the machine and you got to go in luckily we have machines next to it that can uh supplement if it is down so that's why the glass fronts are um are problematic so just make sure either it's close to you if you have a backup plan just be aware that if you buy a glass front that's gonna be, be an issue. Okay, so back to this label maker right here. You can put your name on the machine. You can put your number on the machine. You can make price tags. You can keep this in your, in your snack bin, keep it with you. It runs off battery power. You can buy some extra tape. You can keep it on you at all times, at all times. So if something happens, if a price label broke or you wanna change the price, all you have to do is put in the price, print it out, print it out and stick it on there. You don't have to worry, oh, this is especially a good point for people who have a lot of different brands of machines because it's difficult to have all the right labels. You know, if you have a Crane, AP, AMS, you have all these different snack machines, it's difficult to uh, have all the right tags when you need it. This, you have any tag you need instantly. That's why I recommend that. So there you go, guys. Those are the four items that I recommend. Grab these two at any local store, hardware store, Home Depot. You can get them on Amazon too. You can get this on Amazon. Vista print, make a, make a brochure. And this is on Amazon. Just Google Dino, Dymo uh, label maker. I think it's under, I think it maybe is $15. This is the best $15 you can spend. These two right here, it's the best you can spend right there. So, let's see. Mike says, which glass front would you go with? Um, so now the price, on the, the price on the GF9 has come down and I'm familiar with having to change the gates and familiar with it enough to where I would go with that. I would not go with a Dixie Narco even though I've had to change the motors, the boards on them, the um, cups, I would stick with the Vendo just because I understand that besides that sensor issue, that's really been the main, the main issue with it. So um, I would just buy it and drill out the, the sensors if it became a problem. So I'd probably go with the, um, I'd probably go with that, the Vendo GF9, which I don't even know if I'm making that anymore. So, uh, 
yeah, we had a great week here, hill vending. Full pallet of Diet Coke came in. Haven't been able to do that for over eight months. Um, haven't seen this one right here. Coke, look at this. Don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody. Don't tell Sam's the... <laughs> Got another pallet of Coke. I have a pallet and a half of Coke in the warehouse for the first time in over a year. Who would have thought? Let's see, I think I saw Kevin here. Uh, so 721 has a glass front. So 721 has what's called a live display. Live display means you can see the drink in it. Flavor, um, or it's called like flavor strip, like this one right here. So you're either gonna see these, the flavor tabs, or if you see the actual, it's not glass, it's uh, plastic, it's called a live display. So if you see one with the bottles or cans actually in the window there on the door, that's called a live display. And actually those are a little bit more expensive, only like 100 or $200 more, but it looks better. And, but that's just personal preference. Some people think that the, the flavor tab strips look better. So, um, but if you see one, Kevin, that has the, that has the drink in the window, that would be a live display is what they call that live display. Yeah, live display. That's what I agree. I agree with you, Kevin. This one right here is one I'm working on to get uh, to sell this one. Guy wants the uh, credit card reader on there. So I'm going to get that hooked up, get that hooked up and put together. That's um, a three wide right there. And yeah, I'm going to get that everything hooked up. So let's see. Ken just logged on. Appreciate you logging on. Wrench, 1130 seconds. 1130 seconds. Nut driver. Okay. Watch the beginning. I think you can just type that into, uh, you can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's, but again, the distance, you need to get to that nut. You can't get there with a regular, uh, can't get that to a regular, regular, I guess you could put an extended wrench on there, but uh, yeah. So, David, do you make your own flavor strips? No. No, I buy them. So this is how I keep flavor strips. Um, so what I'd recommend, you can grab one of these too. Grab a little, uh, one of these. You keep your flavor strip. You like that? Now, if you need something, all your flavor strips are organized. Organized in one location. So, the, the benefit of a live display too is you do not need the flavor strips because the drink, only downside is sometimes the drink, uh, the discoloration does happen. So you might need to pull it out uh, or put some food coloring in there with water to make it, uh, um, make it happen. So awesome. Well, yeah, if you're just watching, just joining, go ahead and rewatch this to the four things that you need. We got to get back and hit this list. You got to get back on the list. Let's see. Um, yeah, I got to the screwdriver. That's nice. Hill vending exclusive. There you go. You guys got an inside look at a hill vending exclusive. Just got these uh, USA technology telemeters in. So we're going to upgrade. I think we have 13, 13 that were the 2G. So we're going to switch those over to, we're going to switch those over to the 5G. So then we should be good for another 10 years, they said. If you have USA Technology credit card readers, watch out about buying used ones. Two reasons, the transfer process, a lot of people have problems with that. And also the second reason, you might be buying a card reader that you're gonna have to buy another piece and update the modem on it. Because what I was told is within the next, uh, Funny how quickly they ship those out compared to how slowly they are doing. Yeah, I think I got a VIP line, David. I said, you want me to talk bad about you on YouTube, USA Technology? 
ship them out. Or I'm going to say something bad. You know, everybody talks bad about USA Technology. At the end of the day, you shouldn't have to deal with your card reader company a lot. It's just a card reader. You just set it up. It should be on cruise control. Um, I think the problem that a lot of people get into is they put their they don't put their antennas up or they have them in a, in a building, in a bunker, and they expect the reader to be serviced. I'm sure there's a lot of issues, and I'm sure uh, NIAC probably is a better, maybe better, I don't know. But I'm already invested in USA Technology, so I'm gonna stay with them. Um, it was cheaper. So buying all those, buying all those 13, I think it was, 13 of those was $1,500. So again, like I say in the other videos, 50, 30, 20 rule. You gotta put some money aside because there's gonna be these upgrades, these unexpected expenses that you're gonna have to save for. So beware though, when you're buying a credit card reader, a used one, the transfer process is one thing. And then if you're buying a 2G modem, you're gonna have to buy another one for what, 120, 30, something like that. I should have jumped on the March Madness deal. Cost me probably two three hundred dollars two three hundred dollars not being on it so but apparently what they said is they're going to update all the cell phone companies around the country these cell towers they're going up they're gonna they don't have a timetable of or which areas they're doing they're pulling down the 2g stuff and they're installing the 5g and once they install the 5g your 2g credit card readers will no longer will no longer work they said they do not know, they have not told them where they're doing when. It's kind of random. They're going all over and just, I guess, uh, replacing it. So if you walk up to your machine and your credit card reader is not working, that might be the issue. You need to call up your uh, USA Tech or whoever you use and uh, and have them up, send you an upgraded, uh, upgraded modem. So that is what I would recommend that you guys do. Let's see if we have any questions here before we hill vending exclusive. That's right. Yeah, USA Technology. Um, you know, I think they're doing a little bit more. They're doing some more stuff where they're trying to do the seed cash list. They're trying to get, keep in mind, when everybody's trying to do pre kidding and all that, that's fine. If you're all spread out, you have to do pre-kitting. We don't pre-kit here. We got all this stuff. All this stuff. And somehow, we haven't been evicted yet, so we must be making some kind of money. Um, but we don't pre-kit. Keep in mind, the people who are trying to tell you to pre-kit are selling you because it's $3 a month, $5 a month, per machine 10 machines five dollars a month that's fifty dollars a month you're paying and with gas prices going to the moon with gas prices going up come on kevin you should pre-kit saves a lot of time it's something we're looking into it's something we're looking into but uh we've got a pretty good system here pretty good system going down here so um We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in the future. But if we do pre-kit, it will be through USA Technology. I think they have that new seed cashless um, for smaller vendors. They just released it. I think it's $3 a month. I think. David, do you know? $3 a month for the, um, for the new USA Technology uh software or not software but vms so yeah three dollars a month so for us if we're gonna pre-kit let's break that down three dollars a month times 50 so 150 dollars a month it would cost us and i rewatched this yesterday i guess you guys can see that fine right um Fifty dollars, uh, fifty credit card readers at three dollars a month. Now they get that hundred and fifty dollars whether you make money or not. So keep that in mind. Par level, 
Um, I looked into them, and you could use par level with USA Technology, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, they have David paying $6 a month. Kevin's dad has paid $4.69 for premium for 20 gallons. Woo, that's gas. That's San Diego gas. That's San Diego gas right there. Exactly. Exactly. I use par level, haven't uh, tried seed, cantaloupe. Yeah, they, they come up with some new name, with some new term, uh, with some new term for it. So, um, see, the thing about pre kidding though, the thing about pre kidding is what happens if you go into a location, which we have at these different locations, and you want to switch it up. Right? Yeah, you, then you got to go do double, you got to do the work. What happens if someone wants to buy a case of Coke off of you? What if they want to buy something and you don't have it on a truck, then you have to make another, uh, you have to make another trip. So that's a little bit of the downside. But yeah, ideally, we would switch over to pre-kidding and it would be all great. But for right now, we're good with what we got in the hood. Let's see. How many hours saved though? You pay the guys hourly? No, I pay, I pay to get the job done, to get the route done. So, you know, something I never liked about the corporate world when I was working, I worked for Hyatt Hotels, was there was no incentive to get the job done early, okay? If I could get the job done in five hours, I still had to be there for eight. That's what I like to prevent. I can go. That's what's good about the route business in general. Whether it's a bread route, Pepperidge Farm route, vending route, Snyder's route, whatever you want. To, whatever you want. The nice thing about it, um, the nice thing about it, is when you get done, you can do. You can go home, right? So say today I didn't want to do the route. I could do it tomorrow. Or if I didn't want to do it Monday, you could do it Tuesday. So that's the nice thing about it. Uh, let's see. Kevin's dad flipped out about those gas prices. For sure, Kevin. What is the brand of combo? The combo I would get would be an AMS. Just get it refrigerated. Just get it refrigerated AMS. Have six trays, three snack, three drink. And you can convert it to whatever you need. Uh, yeah, get the chilled or refrigerator. You don't need to get the, the, uh, let's see, golfer Chris. I noticed in the background you have a bunch of monster. Do you have a better seller? Yeah, so right now, here's the energy drinks we carry right now. Um, monster, and then that's sugar free monster. So we have regular monster, and then sugar free monster, and then Sam's Club came out of left field and finally picked up bang energy with two different variety packs which was interesting so we carry some of that right here some of the bang energy some of the coffee drinks so those are kind of our energy selections but yeah and then we have uh nos nos high performance energy nos is a little bit cheaper so if you can get away selling nos you're better off all right, guys, I appreciate everyone hopping on. I'm going to sign off for the week of March 26. If you have any questions, watching the replay, drop in the comments. Come back on here live. Close. We're at 3,500 watch hours. Hoping to get to 4,000 in a couple weeks. Hoping to get to 4,000 in a couple weeks so that... Um, yeah, because TikTok, I don't know if you have TikTok, TikTok, 150 some thousand followers on TikTok. TikTok actually pays. I'm getting paid on TikTok. If you want me to do a video on, uh, on how much I make on there, let me know. Until next time, keep your drinks cold and your snacks fresh.